Some might say that Excel cube functions are the new pivot tables because they allow us to build reports based on power pivot models in a more freeform fashion, whereas pivot tables are quite restrictive in their layout and their cells can't be edited. And just like pivot tables, we can use slices to filter cube functions for fully interactive reports and dashboards. Let's take a look. For cube functions to be available, your data must be in the Power Pivot data model. So when you insert your pivot table, make sure that you check the box, add this to the data model, and then you can go ahead and build your pivot table as normal. When you're starting out with cube functions, you'll find it easier to automatically generate cube formulas by converting an existing pivot table like this one here containing my sales by category and subcategory for each month. Now it's a good idea to set the layout into a tabular form via the design tab, report layout, show in tabular form, and also make sure your subtotals are turned off. That way you're not going to have redundant headings left over once you make the conversion. To convert the pivot table, select any cell in the pivot table and then on the analyze tab, OLAP tools, convert to formulas. Now if you have fields in the filters area, I didn't, but if you did, then you'd be prompted to choose to either also convert them or keep them, so you can still filter the data. I prefer to use a slicer for the filtering, as you can see here. Now this conversion permanently replaces the pivot table with cube formulas, and we can see them in the formula bar. The values have been replaced with cube values formulas, and the row labels have been replaced with cube member, likewise for the column labels. If we look at the cube value formulas more closely, you can see the first argument is the connection. This is your data model for the workbook, and this will always be called this workbook data model. Then we have a series of member expressions, and these essentially filter the data. Now member expressions can be other cube functions which evaluate to a set of members or a single member in your model, or they can reference other cells that contain these cube formulas or member values. As we can see with this formula, it's referencing cells B6, C8, and D7. Now to be clear, members can be fields, items, measures, or slices in your model. We can see here we've got a slicer as the last member expression. In this formula, the member expressions are the sum of the amount, the subcategory, the month, and the last one is the slicer. The slicer name has been entered for me when I created the cube formulas. However, if you need to find the slicer name, you can right click and go into slicer settings. And then you can see the name here, name to use in formulas is slicer date underscore underscore year one. Now you can change this name via the formulas tab in the name manager. So I can edit it there and give it a different name if I want to. We'll leave it as is. Now in English, the formula reads, Calculate the sum of the amount for donations for January 2021. Now if we look at the column labels, you'll see they contain cube member formulas. Notice cube member also requires a connection name. And then it references the categories table to get the category charity. And then the data table for the subcategory, which is donation. Now these items are hard coded, which isn't ideal, and we'll look at how to automate this in a moment. But first, let's just take a look at the grand total formula because this is slightly different. Again, it has the connection and then the member expression. But notice here, instead of hard coded category names, we have all, which essentially says to include all of the categories in this cube member. The optional caption has been completed as grand total, so you can change it to something else if you wanted to. Now that we've converted our pivot table to cube formulas, we can cut and paste them to other locations in the workbook, just keeping in mind the cells that they reference. And just like any other formula, you can perform further math calculations on them or nest them with other functions. Now another option is to nest the cube member values inside the cube value formulas to make them more portable. For example, you could simply copy the cube member formula arguments that appear after this workbook data model and place them in the relevant part of this formula. So we're replacing the reference to the subcategory, control V to paste it in. You can see it still evaluates. We can do the same, go and grab the measure name 
and then instead of the reference to the measure cell we can just paste in the measure and lastly we can grab the month and instead of referencing the cell we just paste it in so now that my cube formula directly references the model I'm free to move this cell anywhere in the workbook because it's no longer dependent on any other cells if we look in the formula bar we can see the formula is easy to read because all the elements are explicitly listed so we can see it's referencing the data model the first expression is the measure sum of amount for the category charity subcategory donation for the month of January based on whatever's selected in the slicer However, if you're writing formulas from scratch, it's a lot of work to create each formula with the category, subcategory and month hard keyed. Instead, we can make the formulas dynamic by referencing the hard key values in cells. So I'm just going to copy and paste these formulas and paste them as values. Likewise, for the months and paste as values. Now, if we look at this formula, we can see it's still referencing those cells but they now contain text. We can even copy the measure and paste it as a value. And now that we've done that, we can copy this and paste it over this one, which I modified earlier. And this means I can copy them to the cells in a much bigger table. And that's a super fast way to write cube formulas and build your reports. And I can still use the slicer to filter the data accordingly. Now this technique is okay for simple models like the one I have here. However, if you're working with models that have these items listed in multiple tables, then it's better to fully qualify the row and column labels to avoid ambiguous results. To do that, instead of just referencing the subcategory donation, we can qualify it by referencing the data table and the subcategory. And then we need a dot and an open square bracket, double quotes, and to concatenate it to the cell reference. And then after the cell reference, we need to concatenate another square bracket. So that when we evaluate this part of the formula with the F9 key, just to have a sneak peek, you can see it evaluates to donation. So undo that, press enter. You can see it's still working. Let's do the same for the reference to the month. So again, we want the data table and then the month and then we need a dot and then a square bracket double quotes and and then we need to append another square bracket on the end so now that we've fully qualified the references to the subcategory and the month we can still copy and paste these formulas across the table and they all update accordingly but this way we won't get any ambiguous results because we've fully qualified which table and which field in that table that our text values relate to. Now, so far we've looked at just two of the seven cube functions available. You'll find a link to the list of them and reference guide in the video description. Well, I hope you're excited to give cube functions a try. You can download the Excel file for this lesson from the link here. And if you'd like to learn more cube functions, please consider my Power Pivot and DAX course. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more. And why not share it with your friends who might also find it useful. Thanks for watching.